was an accordion player in downtown Damascus, which was a kind of cushy job because everybody was stoned on cut, and the men were dancing with their very pretty boys, their coal-eyed boys in the dark. But one night, when I was there, the Armenian came to me and said, Ali, there's rumor around that you are Jewish. This is Damascus. You're going to have to leave. He gave me his car um, with the driver who took me down to the Jordanian border. I went to the Jordanian border. I was there about nine o'clock, and I was wandering through the desert thinking I would sleep in the desert when I saw the black tents of the Bedou, or the Bedouin, for the plural. And I walked over to them, and uh, one of them came out. He spoke six or seven languages. He had been fighting with the British, with the other Arabs, with the Germans for a little while, with the Israelis. He asked what I wanted. I asked if I could stay for the night. He said, of course you can stay for as long as you want to stay. And so I stayed with them for about five or six days. And anybody who's read any of the desert stories, um, which come out all the time, know that it is the most boring life in the world. <laughs> that they put in coffee on Friday after morning prayers, and that same coffee is regrinded and regrinded and put in over and over and over again until the next week. They move on, they take their sheep, it is terrible, but one day there was something different. There had been an old man who had been I hardly ever saw him. He was very old. He was <coughs> coughing and smoking and wheezing. And one day he died. And I knew he died because the women were half-heartedly ululating, you know, woo, -woo, -woo, woo sort of thing, which I cannot do. The men also looked very, very sad. So I looked also very sad. And the men then took him out, I guess about a mile into the desert, and they didn't invite me. They took out his body in a small sheet. And knowing in Islam, you must bury the body almost immediately, and I knew that they did. And that night came back for, I was still there with the women, and we sat down, and there was actually a table put out. And on the table were the usual old newspapers or cans from labels of fava beans, which they had bought in Cairo, Egypt, for a while. And on this was each of us, because there were only about 10 of us, the nine minor sheikhs of the tribe and myself, the honored guest, was a piece, moon-shaped piece of white meat, which I had never seen before. And I looked and I had my suspicions and I said, um, rabbit? <laughs> and they said, no, he's uh, Sheikh Abdullah. And I thought it was a bit of a joke and I said, um, uh, what do you mean? Well, we are like you Nazarene, the Nazarene are the Christians, the Gentiles, and we take his goodness into ourselves. We cut off his behind, uh, and we take his goodness into ourselves. And I thought, well, he wasn't that good. I mean, really, I mean, he's, <laughs> he smoked a bit, he wheezed, he obviously complained to the people. And they looked at me, and I looked at them, and we smiled, and we didn't toast or didn't say anything like that. But instead, we each took that piece, and the equivalent of some very, very primitive Arab, really old, old, old Arabic, I speak a little bit of it, this was nothing at all, basically um, l'chaya, basically it was sort of a uh, to life, or in this case, to death. And I took it. I took it down, because what choice did I have? And afterwards, people spoke to me, and they said, how did it taste? And I, was, I would like to say, like Bill Clinton, well, you know, I, I, I tasted it, but I didn't inhale it. But it was nothing at all like that. I said, it didn't. I just sort of gulped it down. That was all. The men looked at me. I looked at them. We all smiled. And a few days later, I left. They kissed me on both cheeks, all of them, because I don't think they had ever seen a non bedou eat flesh as I have. But what choice did I have at that point? Anyway, all I could say about this was that they were very, very wonderful because they had taken me into their hearts. I, on the other hand, taken one of, taken one of them into my stomach. And so I thought <laughs> we had kind of an equal showing on this business. It was the first and last time that I had flesh to eat, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Harry.